Hello, and welcome to Good Conversations. We're honored to have with us again today a former chairman of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribes, Thomas Bearhead Sweeney. Bearhead is also a vet, having served in the Air Force during the Korean War years. For decades, he's been an outspoken voice in Indian country, not only on matters of tribal sovereignty, but also on matters of war and peace. After the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, Bearhead began erecting crosses on his land near Post Creek along Highway 93 to honor the soldiers killed in Iraq. With the recent observation of another Veterans Day and with an election in which the war was clearly one of the issues between the candidates, we thought it appropriate to discuss this and other issues with Bearhead. Welcome. Well, uh, Veterans Day, uh, 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 it's about honoring the men and women who've who've served in the armed forces, and also considering some of these big issues. Uh, uh, maybe we should touch on the Iraq war now, and uh, I'd like to ask your thoughts on that issue. I was opposed to the first Iraq war, and really opposed to the, uh, to the second one. And and I got to looking at and all the innocents that were killed. Every one of our American soldiers that died, men and women, in my opinion, died in vain in an illegal war. Hmm. And we have never understood the mind of those people, the Arab people. Revenge is an integral part of their system. And every time we kill an Iraqi, we create a terrorist for the next hundred years. Mm. They're selling, and I, when I look, talk about Iraq, I, I, I talk about Afghanistan, Pakistan, and that. We want to bring civilization at what price to Afghanistan when men sell their daughters because we chopped down their poppy plants and they had no way to make a living and this old guy said I guess I'll have to sell my daughter to pay my bills on yesterday's news mm. A 10-year-old Yemen girl was forced into marriage, and she's the first Arab girl to get a lawyer and sue and get the marriage annulled. Mm. And that's the kind of people we're dealing with. And we say, no one's ever won in Afghanistan. And according to Max Box, when I talked to him, and he talked to Mike Mansfield, and Mike asked him, what are we doing over there? He said, then he gave me a quick 20 minute history lesson on Afghanistan, dating clear back to Genghis Khan, hmm. that nobody's ever won there. And Russia couldn't win there, that was their Vietnam. Hmm. And what do we think we're gonna do? And what, we've killed Saddam. What did it do? We will kill Osama eventually, or he will die of kidney failure, what's it going to do? If we kill him, it'll create 10,000 more terrorists. <laughs> what we have to do is quit pointing bombs at other nations, quit pointing missiles at other nations. We have to change our whole attitude to the world. We can no longer police the world or control the world that we have to begin, if we want to get in the missile business, then let's get in the missile business of peace, of missiles of food, of medicine, of, of doctors, of, uh, of uh, treating those people like human beings. Mm. We have to change that attitude. Why are we the most hated country in the world? No, and, and our, our screw-ups in the Middle East go back To 1902 or 1900, when they first discovered oil over there, mm -hmm. and then 
And then uh, England subdividing all of that country after the First World War and making different countries. And now we're over there, we're fighting, they say, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, this warlord, that warlord, the Sunnis, the Shiites. Who are we fighting over there? And who's helping who? And then we say, well, we can't let Iran have atomic bombs. Why, my God, why would, they, why would Iran want to have atomic bombs? Because they're surrounded by them, that's why. <laughs> Very simple. You know, I'd just love to see what this nation would do if we had the Arabs put in atomic bombs in Canada and Mexico. You know, and that's why Iran wants atomic bombs. 200 in Israel. They're not pointed at the United States. Mm -hmm. You know, Afghanistan, got, got, Russia's got them. We've got them in all of our military bases. Diego Garcia down there. I don't think Afghanistan, but Pakistan. I mean, Pakistan, yeah. I meant. Yeah. Has got, has got a... Well, does this mean that you disagree with uh, President-elect Obama's plan to send more brigades of troop, troops oh, in yes. Afghanistan? Oh, yes. Very uh -huh. definitely. Uh -huh. I think what we have to do is, is I agree with his wanting to talk. Mm -hmm. But more troops is not going to be the answer. And we're dealing with a different breed of cat over there. We don't understand that, that Afghanistani mind. And until we understand it, until we say hands off, you know, we're just creating more terrorists. Mm -hmm. and, and no, I, you bet I disagree with him. Doesn't, doesn't this sound a little bit like we didn't learn something from Vietnam, which was in part propelled by our lack of understanding of the culture there and, and our, our, uh, well, our, fear, our, our, our stupid fear of communism is what it was. And, you yeah. know, they thought it was going to be a domino effect. Yeah. But, but Afghanistan, it's a, 2,800 people were killed in 9-11. Tom Brokaw, the other day on the news, said a person dies every 10 minutes of a heart attack. 400,000 people a year die of, of smoking or smoking-related diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 9-11. Mm-hmm. Remember Pearl Harbor. Remember the Alamo. Triggered all kinds of bad things. Mm -hmm. You know, the Homeland Security and all this other crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. People can check your mail, check your library card. You'd have no privacy. You have this to read your teller, check your phone calls. Because mm -hmm. we panic. Have we been attacked since? No. Mm -hmm. I don't fear, I don't fear them. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that, uh, and I think we would have less to fear if we said, hey, let's talk with these people. We're not going to control the Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. We're never going to do that. Russia's tried it. What did we do? We supplied Osama. Mm -hmm. The black Nelson Mandela, African National Congress, was on our list of terrorist nations. Mm -hmm. We picked the wrong people. <laughs> We're stupid. You know, and, and no, I'm not for, I, I'm for pulling in, a, I'm not for being an isolationist. Mm -hmm. And I'm for retaliation. But I'm not for a continued retaliation that gets, no, that, that gets us nowhere. I was going to ask, yeah. So you're not necessarily opposed to any war or even a war of retaliation, but it's a matter of the extent of this, the extent of the involvement, getting into a quagmire? Or? If I were president, I would not go to war without the consent of Congress. Mm -hmm. And I would have to have a very real strong reason for going to war. Because 9-11 gave us no 
visible target. There wasn't a visible target like the Mexicans were at the Alamo and like the Japan was at Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. When we went to war with the Taliban or Al-Qaeda, there was no visible target. They're all over there in India, they're in Thailand, they're here, they're there. And there's no visible target. Mm -hmm. And if there would have been a country to deal with. And so we get over there and, and, and we're not going any place. Mm -hmm. We're going to be there a hundred years. No, I definitely, that's one thing I disagree with Obama on. Okay. Well, this is uh, in part in reference to Veterans Day, and I'm wondering, do you have a chance to talk with other vets about your views on these things, and what kind of debates or discussions do you yeah, end up That's with? a strange thing. Uh, I'm afraid. I get a little afraid when old soldiers rattle sabers. Young men have a tendency to die. Mm. And I, I talk to them a little bit, but I don't bring it up. Because I think, I think they're, they're probably on Bush's side and Obama's side and get in there and, mm -hmm. and so I don't bring it up. Uh, I, no one's ever, I've had veterans congratulate me for putting up the crosses. Hmm. I was going to ask. That didn't even know, I've had the newspaper of Holland come over and interview me, the Dutch television station come over and interviewed me, hmm. uh, the local newspapers. <clears throat> and it seems to be a, because we didn't honor the veterans, and this is one thing I give Indians credit for. The Indians gave honor to their, their uh, Vietnam veterans. That didn't happen in Indian country with mm -hmm. Vietnam veterans. Mm -hmm. And uh, like it did in, in the regular other America where they yeah. dishonored. Yeah. And, and I look at that, another 50,000 men died in vain. The Gulf of Tonkin paper was a farce. Mm -hmm. You know, we, the idea that, that we were going to roll over and all the other Southeastern Asian was going to become communism. And uh, we've done some crazy things. Mm. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm opposed to war in the sense that I think we have to have a strong defense because there are crazy people in this world. But I'm like, like uh, Eisenhower. Rather sought or unsought, beware of the military industrial complex. Mm. And they've got us right by the throat. You know, and, and I can't imagine the prices we're paying for that, ar that ordinance. Mm. I heard once that, a, that an aircraft carrier in non-combat conditions is a million and a half dollars a day. What is it in combat conditions? Mm. And, and we're just spending too much money on war, not enough on peace, and not enough on medicine. We got 44 million people without health insurance, and we've got uh, poverty in, in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. Hungry children in the United States. Hungry children right here. Food, food uh, stores that are, go, are running without food because no one's donating anymore. More and more people getting unemployed. You know, we can spend our money on other things besides war. You know, education. We want to educate and, and give health care to all of the Iraqis. We can't do it here. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't educate and, health, and give health care to our own people. That's crazy. Mm. No, that, we have to change our... The United States... And I think Barama wants to. 
Barama, Obama, <laughs> Obama, your mama. Uh, I think he wants to open up a dialogue with these people. And he said so, and he was criticized by the, by the Republicans for that. But someone's got to take the first step. And we just can't go in pouring in hundreds and hundreds of lives day after day and, and billions and trillions of dollars in a, in a never-ending war. Yeah. And so it sounds like uh, safe to say you don't buy the argument that support the troops means support the war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, believe, I believe in supporting the troops. You bet. And they aren't getting the support. Yeah. They're coming back wounded and they're... Heads all screwed up from, from uh, what is what they call post-traumatic stress. Yeah. Not getting the treatment they should be getting. No, and and we said, Walter Reed Hospital, the foremost military hospital in the, the United States, was in shambles, and they got what caught here a couple of years ago with <laughs> mold in the corners and, yeah. and right in our own capital. Yeah. No, we've got other things to attend to besides a war in a country that people selling their daughters oh. because we chopped down, I saw it on television, hmm. soldiers going through chopping down these poppy fields. Mm -hmm. Biggest export in Afghanistan. Who are the users? Mm -hmm. The users are right here. The United States uses more cocaine than anybody. The problem is ours. Why aren't we doing something about them? What do we do with a with a with a drug addict? A drug addict? We build another prison. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's uh, continue this in a moment. We'll take a All quick right. break. Uh, we'll be right back. We'll just be gone for one moment. Don't go anywhere. There is a dangerous storm we must watch for. The storm is stroke. If you notice or experience these sudden warning signs, call 911 immediately. Numbness or weakness of the face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body. Loss of vision, speech, or understanding. Trouble walking or dizziness. Sudden severe headache or confusion. Preserve our nation. Know the signs and watch for the storm. You could save a life. And welcome back. We're continuing our conversation today with Bearhead Sweeney. And uh, I think we'll get to some of the issues in this remaining segment of the program of uh, when Bearhead was uh, first chairman in the 70s and some of the issues he dealt with during those years and uh, before and after. And uh, uh, Bearhead, in the last program, uh, you just referred briefly to uh, an issue that I think is of interest to many people, which is that of all the old ponderosas along the lower Flathead River and why they're still there today. Um, I think many people don't realize that the BIA at one point was proposing to cut them all down, wasn't it? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> the story I got, and I don't know how true it is, the council sold that timber for a steak fry and a boat ride on a river they sold that timber for $20,000, or we're going to sell it for 20000 And this is what year about, more or less? Mid-70s? It was before, before I got on the council. Oh. It was in the early 70s. Early 70s. Anyhow, Joe McDonald got a hold of me. What are we going to do? And I said, the timber was marked. Well, Thurman Trosper was a fairly well-known ex-forester and environmentalist, and what are we going to do? Then I got to thinking, John Craighead. John Craighead did goose studies on Flathead Lake and, and the Flathead River. And then in my environmental talks that I was doing when I was involved in that, I met guys in the in the movement, you know, like Les Pengalli at the University of Montana and Bob Rehm, who later became, he was at the University of, you know Bob Rehm? Yes. He was later a legislator. And head of the state 
Democratic Party. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and uh, so well, get a hold of them. See what we can do. Boy, they jumped right on it. So we had a meeting with this Fred Malroy. He was a BIA? He was official? a BIA head forester. Uh -huh. And this guy, boy, the Bureau can dig out the nuts from all over, and this guy was really one. And we met up at Sloan's Bridge, or Buffalo Bridge. And the first thing he said was in the morning, we were going to float it. The first thing he said kind of set the tone of the meeting. I wished I was meeting with some Indians here instead of a bunch of you white people. So we go on down the river, and he said, that tree's going to fall over. That big tree's going to fall over. See, look at the roots. They're exposed. They're going to fall over. I said, those roots have been exposed for over 50 years, and that's <laughs> fell over. So anyhow, we go on down the river, and we clash and this and that. And uh, it gets kind of volatile at one point, and and I get kind of crazy and thinking, we ought to drop this guy in the river, <laughs> you know. And but anyhow, there's no meeting of the minds. And then they all, I don't go with them. They all have dinner down at the Bison Range Cafe. One of those in Ravalla. And I don't know what was said to Malroy by them guys, but he backed off just like that. Hmm. And that was the problem. And then the next big problem, that came along was uh, was the dams on the river. And remember when you first came and I said you're always born 20 years too late? <laughs> well, back in those days, I could go like that and have 400 people doing something somewhere. Hmm. And that whole environmental movement and the whole protest movement had died out like it is now. Nor a college campus is a college, a place where there should be dissension, where there should be argument, where there should be people protesting something. Four minutes? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, they, they're quiet. Mm -hmm. And the reason why, there's no draft. But then, you could get people all over. They were, they were involved. Students and everyone. We had over 400 people float the river. Uh, and which resulted in a lot of things like Northern Cheyenne, for example, was the first reservation to have class one air. <laughs> Mickey Pablo was the chairman of the Montana affiliated uh, Montana Tribes organization. And he came back to the council one day and he said, Say, Northern Cheyenne's getting pressure because they're the only tribe with class one air and they, would you be interested in going into class one air. Hmm. And I was the chairman, and I said, is that a motion, Tommy? And he said, yeah. And I said, second, Joe McDonald. <laughs> and and uh, the superintendent jumped up, says, I can get you $75,000 to do the study. Hmm. So we got the, the air quality study done. and. Uh, uh, Clancy Gordon through the University of Montana, a guy by the name of Phil Taranjo. Uh Phil was the main person. Hmm. I, my name's on it, but I didn't have that much. I, I did a little bit, but I, I, uh, my name's on, on the title. So. <laughs> uh, but I really didn't do a lot of it. And it's a simple document. It was uh, in, in the sense that it was procedural. EPA said, do one. Two, three, four, five, and so on. And when you're done, you're done. You'll have it, the class one designation. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, so we had to write to all the governors bordering Montana. We had to write to all the mayors. 
and that. And uh, so, but then the environmental movement died. And see, the first Earth year was what, 72? Somewhere in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the big thing is global warming. We talked about that back in the 70s. Yeah. And, and, but what we couldn't decide, when I say we, the experts, couldn't decide whether it would be a freeze or a warming mm -hmm. because of the, the blocking out the sun. Yeah. The, yeah. the gas is blocking out the sun. So now the evidence is there, and, and the real big worldwide issue mm -hmm. today is if we don't do something about global warming, we know you can forget about Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, the United States, and all of it. It'll overwhelm all those. Issues. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, and it's got to be, they say, what, 10 years? Hmm. 10 years, we have to yeah. make a... And every time they come back with a new estimate, it seems to be shorter. <laughs> yeah, and, and I can't believe people not believing that, but I think the, the first important issue globally to me is global warming. Mm -hmm. As a country, it's Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, the Middle East, and us changing our attitude towards those Arab nations mm -hmm. and saying, hey, we have cheated you for years. We have put our puppet, puppets in power. The Shah of Iran is an example. And we, we are going to change. We're going to deal with you as a one to one, government to government, as they say in Indian country. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of the same issue internationally. Well, thank you for being here for this uh, half hour and for the previous half hour. We'll continue it again All very right. soon, I hope. Thank All you right. very much. And thank you to our viewers for being with us. We'll see you next time. If you're still on. <laughs> <laughs>